Accounting 17B, flow of manufacturing costs and overhead variances. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, email, and website. And I'm teaching the book Cost Accounting for Dummies every week online for free, and there's our Twitter page. This is an, a, what I think is a good example, that I, a, pre, a calculation that I work for a student on a fairly large problem. And I think it does a good job of showing the flow of manufacturing costs. And I've done this in several other videos, but I thought this one would, would uh, be particularly good. So what we have here is we have raw materials, we have labor costs, and we have overhead. And all of them are going into work in process. This is a very involved problem, but I think it makes some good points. We have a beginning balance, we have purchases of raw materials, and then we have raw material that's moved into WIP, work in process. And if I scroll down, you'll see that I pick up this number for all the material that's transferred in during the month. And if I click on that 1775, You'll see that this is a company that does job costing. So here are the jobs, A3, A4, down the right and down the left-hand side. And you can see where I'm picking up all of the costs for the month for labor, or material, excuse me. Then for labor costs, we tie together, and this is what I particularly like about this problem, labor costs and overhead because we're applying overhead based on a percentage of labor based on a labor hour calculation so we start off we write checks for fifty four hundred and sixty dollars thirty four hundred and sixty gets allocated to work in process labor costs another two thousand gets charged to overhead so the way we can look at that is Here's that total labor charge for each job, and you can see when I click on them, here's each job, and highlighted is the labor costs that were incurred each month, and these are debits into the work in process account. Let me reverse that out so I don't lose my formula. And you'll also see that $2,000 increases the manufacturing overhead control account, which is the checks that you write. Manufacturing overhead control, MOH control, represents actual spending, the checks that you write for overhead, and we increase them by debiting. You'll also see that we have some supplies. We have a beginning balance and some purchases, and we have an amount that we move to manufacturing overhead as an expense. So what we have debited to the manufacturing overhead account is a cost for supplies and a cost for indirect labor that came out of the labor account. So we've got materials going into work in process. We've got labor going into work in process. And you'll also see that we've got overhead going into work in process. There is debits during the during the month of September for these jobs, for overhead, debits going into work in process. You also had a beginning balance in work in process for these jobs, a three's beginning balance, beginning of the month, a four's beginning balance. And this is probably the hardest part because you can see that we debit this account for checks we write, and then we credit manufacturing overhead applied for what we actually put in overhead in work in process excuse me so there's the 12 1, 2, 2, 5 that went into overhead at the beginning of the month here's that check figure if I click on it here are the overhead balances that are debits increases to working process beginning of the month So we credit manufacturing overhead applied and we debit work in process. And then during the month of September, there's the 1730 that's highlighted 
And if I click on the 1730, you're going to see debits to work in process for overhead during September, scrolling down, overhead during September, overhead during September. Now, you'll notice that there's a difference between the checks that we wrote, these debits, and the overhead that we applied into work in process, these credits. And we make a journal entry to handle the under or over applied overhead. And you can see here that we credit manufacturing overhead control to zero out the balance. That's a credit of $24.90. We debit manufacturing overhead applied to close out the account balance to zero. That's a debit. And to make the entry balance, the difference between debits and credits is a credit to cost of sales for $4.65. To make the entry balance, we credit or reduce cost of sales. You'll also see that some of the jobs get finished. We credit work in process and debit finished goods. Credit work in process, debit finished goods. And then we sell the items that are in finished goods. So we take that total and we credit finished goods to bring the balance to zero at the end of the month for finished goods. It's a little hard to show everything on the screen. We end up debiting cost of sales for the items transferred from finished goods into cost of goods sold. Our ending balance of cost of goods sold is the jobs that were finished and sold less that credit entry to close out manufacturing overhead. Here's the revenue from what we sold, and that agrees to cash collections. So in this example, the revenue is based on cash collected only. Here are the cash collected for the three jobs we finished. It adds up to $16,465. Debit cash. We credit revenue. And if you go down to an income statement, revenue less cost of sales and another expense gives us our net income. So once again, the flow goes from the control accounts for material, labor, and we apply overhead. That ends up in work in process for the jobs, big debits. When the jobs are complete, we credit work in process. We debit finished goods. Once we sell the goods, we credit finished goods to get the balance to zero. And we debit cost of goods sold. And the revenue less the cost of goods sold and other expenses gives us our net income. So I hope that helps you see there's the revenue, there's the cost of sales and the other expense. I hope that helps you see the flow of manufacturing costs. That's the end of this session. You can find all of our YouTube videos are now linked to the website. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and live chat, there's the website itself. We're teaching cost accounting for dummies free online every week. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.